Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about how I have planned my destination wedding so far. Um, any advice that I can give that I've had happen so far. Uh, yeah, so if you want to see what I've planned and my advice, then just keep watching. If I'm looking weird, sorry, I have fake lashes on that I never wear so they feel heavy because I'm pretty sure I put this one on wrong. So let's just jump into this. Um, I have not had my wedding yet. I have seen some videos about planning your wedding and most of them have already done it. Um, my wedding is in September of this year. So it has not happened yet, but I wanted to show you kind of what I have so far, what it's going to be like, uh, what I've planned and just kind of what tips I can give you of how I've planned so far with doing a destination wedding. So my wedding is actually going to still be in the United States, but it's not going to be in my state. Um, actually going to be five states away. So it's in Florida, um, which is where me and Mike are obsessed with. We've lived there three times, twice. We've attempted to live there twice. Because of financials and the job market down there, we haven't successfully been able to move. And the only way for our family to help was if we moved back. So we did move back both times. We have still now been here uh, th three years, I want to say now it's been. So yeah, we decided we wanted to go to Florida for our wedding. It's kind of like our special place, I guess you could say. So planning a destination wedding, I feel, is so much harder than planning a normal wedding. Obviously, I've never planned a normal wedding. I started planning a normal wedding when we first got engaged three years ago, and then I think just got overwhelmed and quit and didn't care that much. So, yeah, I think destination is harder. Most people can't afford to fly to where their destination is, to go look at venues, to go look at places, to go look at florists, to go look at, you know, if you want a wedding planner, to go look at the, you know, most people don't have the money to do that. I don't. So everything has been planned over the computer and over the phone. So I do not have a wedding planner. Um, maybe that's also something some people might want and would rather have as a wedding planner. I don't have one. What I did was actually just search for places that basically did a bundle. I initially thought I wanted it on the beach and so I was looking for places on the beach and I was finding companies that did everything and you basically just showed up. They did, you know, the altar, they did the chairs, they did, you know, if you had a sand unity because it's on the beach, they did all of that. They coordinated all of that. You just paid your set price and told them the day. So that's kind of what I was looking for. I didn't want to have to plan much. I didn't want to have to try to figure out extra little side things like where do I order my chairs? Can I get them to deliver them to this random location because it would be a beach? And I also hate crowds and I am very uncomfortable being the center of attention. So the fact of being up and, you know, the bride in a wedding already makes me nervous and have anxiety as it is because I just... I hate being the center of attention. I absolutely hate PDA, so that part is going to suck for me. Um, but, so then the thought of also being on a public beach, I mean, they obviously try to find it in a more private, secluded area, but it still has to be a public beach. So you still have people coming and going. So I kind of was just trying to get comfortable with that. Um, I did eventually find a website that did beach weddings that also offered suggestions for reception places. So that was the other thing, is trying to find a place that was small enough for a reception because obviously not everybody is going to fly to Florida of my family. I don't anticipate very many. I actually anticipate maybe 20, possibly 30, and that's mostly just like close family. So with that being said, it's hard to find a place that's not huge. When you search up, you know, reception venues in whatever city, most of the time they show you big places or places that hold 100 or 150 or more. So that was kind of like, what am I going to do? I don't want to pay this expensive amount of money for a reception that's only going to maybe have 20 some people. So this one website, and I wish for the life of me I could remember, I should check my email. I'm going to get this for you. So if you're Ah, ha 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 ha. Yes. Okay. So the website or the name of the company is called Wedding on a, Weddings on a Whim and it is in St. Pete Clearwater, Tampa of, of Florida. So if you're getting married in that area or wanting to, that is a good company. Um, they don't actually have anything to do with 
my wedding though. So they're the company that I found the website, they do beach weddings, but then they also had the suggestions of reception areas. And so they're kind of just were the coordinator between getting in contact with that um, reception area and me, and then everything else since then has just been between me and the reception area. What I found out <clears throat> is that, okay, let me, let me just tell you my thought process when this happened. I saw reception areas. There's a couple of restaurants, and to me, I just didn't want to do that. To me, it didn't feel wedding enough, um, so I didn't want to do that. I do know some people. Uh, I do know some people will like rent an Airbnb and do the backyard as the reception and ceremony, which I think is a good idea. I just couldn't find any place down there that I really wanted to do that. Um, plus, a lot of them were saying you can't throw parties, blah, blah blah. Respect the neighbors, you know, obviously. So I just was like, you know, let's not do that. So the options on this website were restaurants and a yacht. And of course, I've always wanted to go on a yacht. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just gonna look for fun. Obviously, way too expensive. No way I could afford that. So I just looked for fun. Uh, it turns out I can afford it, and turns out it's actually fairly cheap. So I can't have a night wedding because if I were to have a night wedding, I think it's like two or three thousand dollars extra to rent the whole boat. And I don't want to rent half the boat because to me that just feels uncomfortable with people partying down below while you're up above. To me it just felt uncomfortable. I want the whole yacht. And to do a night one would have been two or three thousand. I can't remember exactly, but two or three thousand more. And I was like, yeah, I can't afford that. So. I am doing a day wedding. They just started offering the service, she said, probably a couple months ago. Um, well, probably six months ago by the time now of me filming this and me talking to her. But they did start offering that as a service that you can rent the whole boat. Um, and so you rent it for three hours. Uh, it's going to be weird for me. I do still need to figure out what we're going to do afterwards because I'm accustomed to night weddings and I'm accustomed to like the wedding being at 4 or 5 and then the reception starting at 5 or 6 and then being done at like, you know, 10, 11. So, and then you go home and go to bed. <laughs> so I don't know how to do this and so I still need to figure out that part. So if you guys have suggestions of what to do after the wedding, for day weddings, let me know because in order to do this, the wedding is at noon and then the boat leaves at 12.30 so the reception, so let me back this up, I missed a step. Um, the boat offers the ceremony for only $125 extra on top of what you're already paying for. So I'm having both the ceremony and the reception on the boat, forgot to mention that. So what I wanna, so basically you board at noon and then the ceremony is while the boat is docked and then at 12.30 the boat after the ceremony, should be 12.30, the boat will leave and you will cruise for two and a half hours. So it's basically going to be done at three. So I need to know what to do after that. Obviously I'm going to want to go back to our Airbnb. It's not actually Airbnb. I can't think of the name of what that company is called, but it's the same concept. So obviously I'm going to want to go back and get out of the dress. I don't want to spend the rest of the day in the dress because you can't move very well. Um, so I need to figure out what to do. I don't want us all to just disperse and do our own thing just because I feel like that's weird. I'd rather just do something together. I'm thinking like going to a dinner all together and then they can disperse for whatever they want to do as a late night. Mostly because me and Mike will probably want to go do car things. So I don't know. I I need help. <laughs> um, so let's get into the actual stuff about the wedding. So that's the concept of where we are. We're going on a boat, on a yacht. Sorry, yacht. Everyone I tell is like, wow, a yacht? And I was like, it sounds fancier than it is. I mean, it's still fancy, don't get me wrong. It looks really nice, it looks really pretty, but it sounds more expensive than it is. So I'm gonna post up pictures because I want to kind of give you a background on what this is gonna be like. So my um, original thought, hold on, trying to find the picture so that when I describe it, I can see them physically. So our original thought of color scheme was just gonna be white, black, and gold. We like the idea of fancy, classy, like, you know, simple. But the boat has its own theme. It's got its own colors and I'm fine with that. So we're just actually, we switched it to basically match the boat. So I will post a picture. Let's move over so you can see it. I will post a picture right here of what the yacht actually looks like. 
So this is the outside of the yacht. Um, if you can see, there's two decks, and in the very back, the top deck is where the ceremony will be. Here's an image online that I found of somebody else's uh, ceremony on the dock, or on the deck. So that is what the ceremony should look like. You do have to pay $75 for that arch. Um, and then here is what the interior looks like. So as you can see, this interior is navy blue-ish. It's blue and gold. So we decided to keep with that theme. Now that the pictures are gone, ugh, get back in place. <laughs> so we decided just to keep with that theme. So if you notice from the pictures though, the blue is kind of overwhelming that I feel like it's just a little dark. So what I'm gonna do is we're doing gold, blue, and pink, blush pink, to kind of offset. So hopefully the blush of the pink will kind of lighten it a little bit. So that is our color scheme. Um, I have the bridesmaid dress. We are doing only one bridesmaid and one groom. So <clears throat> I'll put the picture of what the bridesmaid dress looks like here. Um, it's just something really simple. She picked it out because I'm not really that picky. I just wanted it to be the color. And then I found a cake online on Pinterest that I really liked. And yeah, I really liked it, but there is like, I wanted it to be a little different and I wanted, so I kept explaining it to my friend because she's also doing the cake. She's done wedding cakes for a lot of people. And so it's going to be a four tiered cake, but the bottom two tiers are going to be made out of styrofoam. Um, and then the top two will be actual cake just because there's not that many people, but also what are we going to do with it afterwards? We are staying for a whole week, so I could eat it the whole week. Yeah. Anyways, so I could, I knew I wanted to take pieces of one cake and pieces of another cake and kind of mesh them together, but I couldn't envision that. So I played around with uh, Pig Monkey and kind of made my own cake. So this is what the cake should look like. Uh, ignore how bad the editing is because it's really bad. But that's what the cake is going to look like. This is the cake topper I got. It is acrylic, I think. No, I don't know what this is called. I did find this on Etsy. Um, there's a lot of stores that do it. Um, it just has Happily Ever After and then our date. And then I've been keeping it in here just so it was easier to keep together. But this, let me show you our wedding invitations. So we wanted to play we. Why am I saying we? Like the guy ever really does anything. I wanted... <laughs> To play on the theme of this being a, you know, a destination wedding and being on a boat. So I found these. There's lots of companies that do this. Some of them have it where you can rip things off. I didn't want to do that because I liked thick paper. So what I did is a boarding pass. Um, and so it makes it look like it, but it's thick paper. And then we did like a luggage tag for the RSVP. So these were really fun. And I love them. I have so many left though. I pretty much apparently ordered too many. That or I forgot people that I thought I put down. Um, I didn't want to buy a lot of them. And if my family ever watches this, this is the reason you may or may not have gotten one. Um, I didn't want to buy a lot of them. One, because they're expensive. But two, because I know with it being a destination wedding, most family's not going to come. And so I... Don't know if it's considered rude, but I didn't invite a lot of family. I actually just invited the like main, I don't know how to call it, I want to call it the main family, but basically the family members that are my age, I didn't personally invite them. Instead I invited their parents and I can't remember for the life of me, I hope to God I put in family, but I don't remember if I did. But I did that because if anyone showed up or wanted to fly out there, I don't anticipate it being people my age of my family. I would anticipate maybe it being the older generation in my family. Still doubt it on them. But that way I wanted to invite basically by the family. And so each family should have gotten at least one invitation. So I hope, I hope I put and family. If I didn't and family is watching this, just, just know I implied and family. It might not have remembered to write that. but. Um, yeah, so I only ended up ordering, I think, 30-some, something like that. Um, and I actually have leftovers, so I think I might have missed people. I thought I wrote it all down, but I didn't know. Okay, this is weird and just a side note. I saw these at Walgreens, and apparently they're having, like, a wedding 
area theme, probably because of the time of season. I thought these were cute. They're luggage tags that just say Mr. and Mrs. And we needed some anyway, so they're two bucks. Two dollars. So there's still a couple of things. I have not picked a florist yet. I have picked the florist, but because right now while I'm filming this, it's Mother's Day, and so she's been backed up, so she can't fix her proposal because she accidentally added one too many groomsmen so I can't sign it because the quotes wrong so after she fixes it which I did see in my email she has fixed it but I have to wait to work to have a scanner to scan it back so um, once that happens I do have a florist this is an image of what the flowers look like they're just pink and white uh, like I said I wanted to keep the pink in there to make the atmosphere feel lighter with the navy blue kind of making it dark. So with this being a destination wedding, I kind of feel stressed out because there's no rehearsal. Like I know obviously the concept, I've been to plenty of weddings, I've been in weddings, so I know the concept of what you do and where you go, but never being on this boat and only seeing images, it's just really weird. There's no rehearsal. And then because it's a destination and it's on the boat and we can't go early, I have to pick up the flowers the day before. We have to pick up the wedding cert license the day before. Um, Mike and my stepbrother are actually... My, my stepbrother is Mike's groomsman. Um, he asked him, which I thought was really cute. They're basically brothers. Um, anyways, he... Both of them have to pick up their tux that very next first day, we, or the very day before. I can't talk. The day before, they both have to pick up their tux. Um, the company is Men's Warehouse. It's actually up here, and there's also one down there. So we're having them get sized here and fitted here and have it be ordered or to pick up down there. So that kind of works out, except it's really short notice to do all of this. And because we can't go on early, I don't know what I'm doing about centerpieces. I'm thinking of just skipping them. Um, but I did want to do, like, little goody things. So... I bought these because they're so cute. Let me just show you. So this is what it comes like. It comes with the box, the string, um, the little like ta luggage tags. And so I thought they were cute too. We're just going to put M&Ms in them and put, have them put them on the table. The company did, did say if you have centerpieces or things for the tables, as long as they're already put together, you can give them to the staff and the staff will go disperse them before the actual reception starts, but they have to be put together. And so I don't know what to do for centerpieces. I don't want to pay for more flowers. Flowers are stupid expensive. I don't know what else to do because they'd have to be put together in order to give them to the staff to put on. So I think we'll probably just do these and call it a day because the tables look nice. I mean, they look good. Um, and I'm not looking to really spend more money because we are going to be down there so for <laughs> we are going to be down there for 7 days so I would like to have a lot more money to do stuff. <laughs> uh yeah. So that is all I have planned so far. I guess that wasn't very many tips for destination. I guess my tips are just try to find places that either group things together like this does, how it groups the ceremony and the reception together. Or try to find companies that will do it all for you. That they, you just pay the flat price and they will set everything up for you. They will source everything you need sourced. Um, basically a wedding planner without actually being a wedding planner. <laughs> so yeah, that is all I have for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one.